Hi sellers, my name is Mari and I am Shield Studios Art Director. I'm super excited to record a new video for you guys today. So this one will be super fun because we will teach you how to optimize your listing and all of the content that it includes for mobile. Now, why is mobile so important? Remember that at least if I don't if I remember correctly, 63% or more of the Amazon buyers come from mobile devices. So you have to make sure that the images are optimized for both desktop because there is still a good percentage that buys them from their computers to also mobile. So that is exactly why we are recording this video today to teach you and give you some tips on how you can do that. Now, in this video, we will cover the listing, the infographics, the lifestyle, the A-plus content, the brand story, like everything, literally everything up until Amazon storefront. So let's go. You will see all throughout the video that we have a lot of recordings, which thank you marketing team for that. It's super helpful um, in which you can see examples of what we are talking about. That's why I'm going to be sticking to the screen a lot so you guys can read with me. Basically, for the listing title, we we can see that only the 81st characters are visible. So it's super important that the, that those first 80 characters are very um, packed with keywords and also, of course, information that can help the buyer understand what they are getting. Obviously, the hero image should speak for itself at some level, but with the keywords on the title, you can help that. Okay, or. Uh, we think <laughs> that the brand name should be there, the relevant information about your product should be there, and the main, obviously, benefit driven keywords. However, though, I don't know if you're optimizing for mobile, you should use your brand name. Why? Because even though you're trying to get yourself to be recognizable, is it the most relevant information to take advantage of? Not really. So maybe you could use the relevant information and the main keywords first and the brand last. That's what I would do on my listing. Now, as you can see here, just as it says on the screen, you could capitalize the first letter of each word and use comments to divide like every phrase. OK, so in here um, you will see that most of them are all in caps, which is super, super important to know here for the mobile listing images. If we go back to the search result page example here, you will see that they are all listed as like different items however though there is another way in which your listing or the search result page can show itself depending on the category so mostly you could see this image right here moving forward we have the hero images one of my favorite images on amazon and remember that a hero image is like a profile picture if you have a good profile picture in social media people will follow you or people will accept your follow request and that's what happens with a hero image is super important for it to be the most presentable possible if you want to hear more about hero images i have recorded a couple of videos on this um like on this topic on this subject and i give you a lot a lot of tips that you can use or take advantage of so go watch it and i will be sure to leave it here or here or on the description below the hero images are the only thing that people will see from your listing on the search result page when it comes to mobile for example here we can see that example like the first thing you see is a hero image so you have to make sure that obviously it is optimized and if you're including the package if you're including uh, a shot of your product where you can see the brand make sure that it's very visible again i'm gonna go back really quick and you can see even though it's a little fast but you can see for example the CeraVe is right there and it's pretty much visible like right there and the mighty patch like even though it's a small photo on a mobile device you can still see what it says on the packaging which is incredibly relevant so you have to make sure first and foremost that that's right there and very clear then we have the different orientation not for mobile for desktop as well but you can use hero images on a larger format or a longer format here it says portrait orientation so instead of working with a square format you can work with a portrait format so instead of having a thousand per 1000 pixels you can have 4000 pixels on the largest side so if you have products that are more vertical let's say that horizontal i would personally recommend using the portrait mode and in this case um I don't think we have an example because it's very rare, but in some cases on the search result page, instead of showing the image and the title next to it, it shows the image and the title below it. So in those cases, when the hero image is literally the center of the screen, if you have a portrait image, most likely it will take a lot of space or a lot more space 
from your buyer's attention because it's literally taking much space on the screen. So make sure you optimize those images for products that um, can work on a larger format. If you have, I don't know, a box, I wouldn't recommend using the portrait format because you would have way too much space both on top and at the bottom. And I would say, um, obviously, just as it is a priority to have a good packaging that is readable or a good shot of the packaging, um, you should also have high definition images. Because if you think Amazon compresses images for desktop, which it, it does, imagine what it does for mobile. Like mobile should be or should be loading much, much faster. So the images get compressed. And you have to make sure that even though the image is compressed, you can still see every single detail out of that image. And that's it for, I would say, the hero images. So moving forward, we have um, the listing images, which include, of course, infographics and lifestyle. Is potentially <laughs> one of the most important aspects of optimizing your listing for mobile. Um, not because these images are more or less important than the other ones, but because these images have the information that will uh, convince or will convert your buyers. If you have a bad infographic that is not readable and it actually talks about the benefits or the features or how um, it can change your buyer's life for the better and it's not readable on mobile and they are on mobile, you lost them. Like they're not gonna get your product. You have to make sure just as the hero image in the tip that just gave you, um, everything should be readable on both desktop and mobile. And as well, like on desktop, and I'm gonna um, go to an actual desktop listing right now. Okay, so on desktop, we're here in a listing that we created. We can see the image here, but if I click on it, I can actually see it like bigger. Same for all of the rest of the infographics, like all of the text is bigger, so I can see it better in case, I don't know, I'm kind of, I personally use glasses, I'm kind of blind. <laughs> when it comes to looking at these images, but the text is readable from here and it's even more readable from here. And if I still don't see it, which is rare, um, here we go. Like I can zoom in and have this text. On mobile, you can zoom out as well. I mean, zoom in as well, but the image should not need uh, to be zoomed in to be able to read the text. So you have to make sure and maybe send yourself the image via iMessage, via WhatsApp, via, I don't know, any folder that you can open from your phone and see if you can read them just from looking at them on the phone. If you have to zoom in, then you have a problem, okay? That is, I would say, the first thing. Another thing that differentiates mobile from desktop is that on desktop, you can have up to, up to nine images plus a video on a listing. And, and actually, not a lot of people know about this. Like at Shared Studio, we deliver over seven images. Like we don't deliver just seven images for the listing usually. Like we have bigger packages than that. And what we do is that we deliver more so you can upload more. On desktop, you can upload up to, up to nine images and then one video. On mobile though, only seven of those images will be um, will be visible and you can have a look right here about that. So it's super, super important that you choose the best seven images to appear first. Like the top seven images that you upload on desktop have to be the ones that you want people to look at on mobile as well. Okay, um, moving forward for infographics, I would say that it doesn't really matter if you use a square or a portrait format. Here we're talking about um, the size, but really just stick to whatever you think is best. The thing with uh, portrait infographics or lifestyle is that it will not get bigger here on this view. It will get smaller. So I personally recommend using square format images for infographics, lifestyle, and so on and so forth. Okay. But super important. Now, being zoomable, the same thing about the quality. A good infographic should be per 3000 artboards. Um, so we make sure that even though the image gets compressed, it can still zoom in and it won't break uh, or it won't get pixelated, which is super, I would say, like a pet beef buyers have. <laughs> um, the same thing as we say for desktop happens with infographics on mobile. Imagine having a bunch of information in just one image and reading it from your cell phone, I believe it's even more overwhelming than looking at it from desktop. So make sure it is minimalistic and very straight to the point. You don't need a whole paragraph to explain one thing. So make sure um, you have that. And of course, the text must be, must be readable that I, that I already mentioned. 
um, and as per videos. And just as all of the rest of the images, videos are super important. And the good thing is that, again, we have seven images and a video for mobile. So if they scroll to the side or if they slide to the side, slide to the side, they will get to the video eventually. And it's super important that you have a good thumbnail that people want to click on to watch the video that you uploaded on your listing. So make sure that's optimized as well. Then we have my favorite, the A plus content. Now the A plus content, as you can see, um, and this is the same listing I have opened here. Let me just go really quick. Like the difference between mobile and desktop is huge because in here we can see every single module like very big and taking a lot of space from the screen, but a mobile, um, it's quite different, like it's very small. So again, the text size is extremely, extremely important. You have to make sure that it's readable and that it is easily readable, okay? The A plus content, as we already know, I will also recorded videos on this and it's my favorite topic. So I promise to teach you a lot of it if you go watch my videos now. Basically, it's all about building a connection with both the brand and the product, obviously from the buyer's perspective. So make sure that the keywords that you want or would connect with most likely um, are there and are easily or easy to read and easy to understand. If the text becomes a problem um, because of the amount of information some sellers want to include, um, I would say that the image should speak for itself or at least it should communicate the strongest message that you need to communicate. Then we also remember that on Amazon, we have different modules to choose from, not just these ones that we use. The reason why we use these modules is to make sure that the whole piece of the A plus content is like one continu continuous visual experience. But of course you can choose others um, or other modules that are, I would say, maybe better for mobile. But either way, for me, looking at this continuous piece is much better than having to read an image in a paragraph, an image in a paragraph. It's extremely important, okay? And as I said, we have a small bonus for you that talks about Amazon stores. Amazon stores, I would say, I kind of are kind of overlooked by smaller brands. But what you have to know is that if you are a small brand, having a store is the best thing you can do for your brand. Why? Because you are acting or you are making yourself look like established brand that people can trust. So if you optimize your uh, storefront, then you will get prop most likely um, the trust from potential buyers. So here on the screen, we will see that storefronts on mobile, instead of scrolling um, or having the top images at the top, of course, and then the least relevant images at the bottom, they use a left to right row prioritization. So the most important information should be on the left rows and the least important, but everything's important, um, should be on the right. That's super, super important and make sure that that is designed like that. So moving forward with the same storefront, I would say that hero images or headers, hero headers should be optimized as well. Remember that the size from desktop and the size from mobile is not the same. So you do have a safe space that you can work with. So maybe if you want to include your logo, don't include it on the outer side of the header, but rather on the inner side. So you can make sure and you can ensure that the logo will be seen from both desktop and mobile. Okay, here we have an Im a hero image size minimum. Obviously the safe zone, what I just talked about. And if you do have a copy here on the header and actually this tip applies to A plus content as well, make sure that it's not a lot of text. It should be like a slogan. It should be a key phrase that your brand uh, is identified with or identified from instead of having a bunch of text. And again, the least text that you use, the bigger um, you can make it in Photoshop or whatever design tool you use to make sure that it's readable, okay? Then we have the this hero image. So again, uh, this talks about the safe zone. It does tell you like 30% of that image will get cut. So you have to make sure that you're not using that 30% for relevant image uh, or for relevant aspects of the header. And then keep it simple. It's so important to keep it simple. A good image should be enough. Like you don't have to have an image and text and the logo and a slogan and this and that, like the more simple you make it, the more attention it will catch, okay? Or the more attention catching it will be. <laughs> okay, so for the image title, you will see that at mobile, 
the images will get a little dark gradient and then text on top of them. So you have to make sure that whatever is relevant of your image is not covered by this gradient. It's extremely, extremely important that it's not like that. So make sure that you inform yourself of the module you're using for that image. And after you make sure where the text is going to be, where the gradient is going to be, then you take that image or then you plan that image. But again, here uh, are the percentages, like 19 to 12 percent of that image will get covered. So you have to make sure that that 19 to 12 doesn't have relevant information or does not have a relevant part of your product on the image that is going to get covered. Extremely, extremely important to take advantage of that. So um, I would say summing everything up, we have a couple of tips for high resolution on your images. You should use a width of 3000 pixels. I already mentioned that and um, a minimum height. Now, a couple of tips from our team to you. So to create high resolution images or high resolution display, as you can see here, um, we will see the zoom in. They will zoom in and it does get a little, little blurry, but that's the compression on Amazon. It's not our image, I promise. <laughs> so you have to make sure, uh, as I said, I already mentioned, we use a 3000 times 3000 um, artboard on Photoshop. Again, if you're using Canva, for example, you can have that same size. It's extremely important that it's a big artboard. So again, when it gets compressed and gets zoomed in, it doesn't get blurry. So that's the tip we can give you in terms of size. Um, we have some custom layouts for uh, the mobile format here on Amazon. For example, you will see that the brand story here is completely different from the from the brand story here on desktop. What you will see is like a quarter of the background, literally just this, let's say, literally this that you can see it on that recording. So you have to make sure that once the agency that you're working with, or even if you're working by yourself, you are going to upload your brand story on mobile, that the background is optimized for mobile as well, or, get, or else it will look completely crazy. So it's important that you can recognize what measurements to use on desktop and what measurements to use on mobile. If you need help for that, leave it in the comments and we will gladly answer that question. And again, Remember to preview all of the images for both desktop and mobile. Um, again, send them to your friends or send them through yourself, through iMessage, through WhatsApp, even upload them on Instagram, on a secret Instagram. I don't know. So you can take a look on how it looks because you making sure that these images work on both formats, desktop and mobile is extremely important before you even upload the images on Amazon because if you, upload them, if you upload them on Amazon without double checking and they are not optimized, it will affect you and it will affect your sales. Before we go, this video is obviously all about mobile devices and how you can optimize your content, but there are more aspects that you can optimize to make sure that your sales skyrocket and then that you get out of inventory, that you can get that seven figure for becoming an Amazon seller. And we will teach you how on a video that Rafa and I recorded together where we will tell you why your Amazon FBA is not having good results. So go watch it now. Let us know if you have any questions. I will make sure that it is linked here or here or in the description and I will be more than happy to see you there. So next, let's see the screen. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe or if you want to book a free marketing consultation, you can go ahead and scan this QR code here or just email us at hello at shared studio and we would be more than happy to help or Rafa and Diego will be answering as well. So thank you so much for watching and see you next week. Bye.